Do you know what a colostomy bag is? It's a plastic bag that's attached to a hole that the doctors have inserted into our abdomen and we redirect your poop into that bag because your colon has been ravaged by cancer. And if we do that, it means you're lucky because you're going to live. Now I recommend avoiding it if you can and I recommend avoiding the belly aches, the constipation, the diarrhea, the rectal bleeding, and all the other crappy things that come with colorectal cancer and its treatment. So today I'm going to tell you the steps that you can take to avoid getting colorectal cancer, especially at a young age. My name is Lauren Hosseth. I'm the director of the Center for Colon Cancer Research here at the University of South Carolina. Now, colorectal cancer is the third leading cause of cancer to death globally, so it's important. Now, the good news is for people over 50 years old, old folks like myself, colorectal cancer rates are decreasing. The bad news is for young adults, even very young adults, colorectal cancer rates are increasing. They've been increasing for the last 40 years, the rise is global, and the contributing factors probably take hold during childhood. So today I'm going to tell you the steps that you and your children can take to avoid getting colorectal cancer early in life, and then I'll explain to you the science behind why these steps work. So meet your colon. Your colon's job is to finish processing the food, remove the liquid that's left over, and move it out of your body as poop. Inside your colon is your microbiome. Now your microbiome are a bunch of bacteria, and we'll just call them bugs. Some are good bugs, some are bad bugs, but there's trillions, literally trillions of these bugs that govern the health of your colon. Think of them as guardians of your colon. Now the good bugs, they have long names like lactobacillus and bifidobacterium. Well, these bugs help process your food, they regulate your immune system, and they tame inflammation. Now the bad bugs, these also have long names like fusobacterium. Now when there's a buildup of these bad bugs, this causes dysbiosis, and dysbiosis drives inflammation. And chronic inflammation in your colon is really bad. Over the course of years, if chronic inflammation isn't tamed, it will likely lead to colorectal cancer. So the steps I'm going to highlight today keep your microbiome healthy, tames inflammation, and gives you the best chance possible of avoiding colorectal cancer. So step one, more than anything else across the globe, we have to change the way we eat. In the mid-1900s, the standard American diet began to change, not in healthy ways. This is when we saw the introduction of processed foods, of more fried foods, sweets, more artificially colored foods with a high calorie content and a low nutrient value. Think fast foods, pre-made box lunches, chips, soft drinks. Now in the latter part of the century, we saw this, the spread of this diet across the globe. Think McDonald's, for example, is in over 100 countries. So this food is damaging our colons across the globe, and we've actually parsed out the data to prove it. Our lab has fed mice a standard American diet, and these mice, lo and behold, get dysbiosis, they get inflammation, and yes, they got colon cancer. Now even more convincing was a study done on human volunteers of African descent. These were volunteers from the USA and South Africa, and all they did was switch diets for two weeks. The USA cohort ate the healthy diet from South Africa, the South African cohort ate the standard American diet. And guess what happened? Yep. After only two weeks of consuming the healthy diet from South Africa, dysbiosis got better, inflammation got 
less and there are higher amounts of butyrate, which is a good guy, it tames inflammation. After only two weeks of consuming the standard American diet, the South African cohort had worse dysbiosis and worse inflammation. So compelling is the entirety of the data, we now call our standard American diet by its acronym, S-A-D. Literally, literally a sad diet. A sad diet, really? Like, our standard American diet is a sad diet now. So what should we be eating? What foods will increase the amount of good bugs, decrease the amount of bad bugs, and thereby tame our colon inflammation? Well, we should be eating a plant-based diet. More beans and meat, more olive oil and saturated fats, more fruits, more vegetables. And it's especially helpful to consume foods called prebiotics. Now, prebiotics are a part of the plant-based diet. They are the oats, they are the barley, they are the legumes. They're the apples, they're the bananas, they're the asparagus. Now the good bugs in our colon consume these prebiotics and spit out anti-inflammatory metabolites. In short, these foods help our colon fight the good fight. Now we can also help our microbiome by consuming probiotics. Now, prebiotics feed the good bugs in your microbiome. The probiotics are the good bugs in our microbiome. The most commonly found probiotic in the USA is yogurt. So these foods help build up the good bugs, fight off the bad bugs, and tame inflammation in your colon. And if you can't imagine adding any of these foods to your daily diet, you can walk down to your local drugstore and buy them as supplements. So what else can we do to lower our risk of colorectal cancer when we're young? Well, you're going to have to get off your butts, and I'll tell you why. You might not believe this, but recent studies have shown that the longer you watch TV, the higher your risk of colorectal cancer. The most shocking study found that women who watch over two hours of TV per day have a 70% increased risk of colorectal cancer, a 70%. Now, it's not the TV watching, per se, that gives you the colorectal cancer. It's lounging around. It's a sedentary behavior that's going to increase dysbiosis and inflammation. And TV watching isn't the only sedentary behavior that's become more popular in recent years. More of us spend time at desk jobs than ever before. We spend more time looking at our phones. And all of us know somebody who spends hours on a weekend binge watching Netflix or playing video games. So how do we fix this? Well, I won't tell you to quit your desk job and find one that requires you to stand all day, but I will join the ranks of advocating for hourly office laps or walking meetings. And I won't tell you to quit watching TV, but I will tell you it's better to watch TV while riding a stationary bike or walking on a treadmill. So get your steps in every day, make time for exercise, and your colon will thank you for it. So over the last 40 years, we've seen a rise in factors that we must combat to maintain colon health. So far, we've gone through a standard American diet and increased sedentary behavior. But there's a third factor, one that's not so visibly obvious, but just as insidious as the others, and that's stress. Stress has been increasing for the last 40 years. The rise is global. And perhaps saddest of all, st stress has been increasing dramatically in our children. Now, scientifically, more and more studies are showing that different causes of stress lead to dysbiosis. And we already know that dysbiosis drives inflammation. What's even worse is long-term stress, common amongst all ages, can lead to a slow burning of your colon. It's a process called inflammaging, 
and it feels as good as it sounds. So it'd be easy for me to vaguely tell you to manage your stress levels, but that really wouldn't be tangibly helpful to you. And while there's uh, hundreds of causes of stress, and I couldn't imagine going through, th through them all in the little time that we have, I will mention a few things that you can do to prevent stressors that have been scientifically proven to lead to dysbiosis. Number one is get your sleep. Adults need eight hours of sleep, children 10 hours of sleep. Set a regular sleep schedule. Set the room temperature. Do everything that you can do to get a good night's sleep every night. Number two is create predictability. Know what's in your short-term future and prepare for it. Before you go to bed at night, set out your clothes, pack your lunch. To-do lists are great. Check them off. Can you imagine like a to-do list for colon health? That'd be cool. Prepare for things that upset you every day. If you're an angry driver, understand there will always be idiots on the road. Accept that fact, let it go, and your colon will thank you. So all of these things seem a bit hypervigilant, but they're actually simple, and they'll knock a bunch of stress off your shoulders. So number three is social support. Community, family, a happy marriage, all will reduce your stress levels. Exceptionally stressful moments will always arrive, but honestly, they'll always recede. Managing your ongoing stress is the surest way of preventing inflammation, and it's key to colorectal health. Now, we don't know yet everything there is to know about colorectal cancer, but what we do know is diet, exercise, and stress are important for colon health and key to preventing colorectal cancer. We're also finding out that dysbiosis can pass from parent to offspring. So for your own sake and your future family's sake, I urge you to eat well, stress less, and move more. Thank you.